Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm joined by the one and only, the GOAT, my coach, Arrow. I'm gonna be kind of breaking down a little bit of what happened during the spring training session, kind of talking about summer and uh, obviously what's gonna happen afterwards. So first of all, how do you feel that the uh, spring training went? Like, how do, you, how do you think as the first season of fully training under your, your care? I think it went well. I mean, workout-wise, definitely the best workout you've ever done. Without uh, a doubt. We both got sick right in between, yeah. uh, right after, like a couple of weeks after starting the outdoor season. That sucks a little bit, it but uh, made some money yes, racing, we did, we did. so that's, that's awesome. Ran some PRs. Absolutely. And like you were able to be super consistent, so that's, competitive that's key. Too. Yeah, competitive for sure. We knew that just by the workouts that you were doing, we knew that you were yeah. able to compete. But... Doing the high mileage, what most people don't understand is that being consistent is the hard part. Just doing it for a whole year, two, three years, mm -hmm. that's the hard part. So being able to do it without getting injured, just getting sick is part of it. Um, and just bouncing back and getting back into shape is pretty good. Yeah. One more one more racer. Yeah, and hopefully we make some money off of that. Yeah, result. for sure. And little do you guys know, in like 12 hours, both of us are going to be walking away with uh, 500 bucks a piece. So, <laughs> hopefully. And an American flag. So. Yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed, of course, but... No, yeah, I mean, going from, you know, 70, 80 miles a week, I had done 90 miles once in the fall, and that was it. And then now consistently doing 90 miles throughout the entirety of, like, winter into spring. Uh, I mean, obviously, workouts were the best I've ever been. Big PRs, uh, great races, good compet competition and competitiveness. I mean, I was really happy with just being able to compete and not being like, I mean, I was top three every race I ran. Like the, yeah. I think the 5K we ran and uh, Stan and then the 5K road race that I won, that my, at Oz, obviously I took third in both of those and that was the worst I did yeah. so far. So fingers crossed we hold that yeah. on to the race in Chicago tomorrow, but I think, yeah, definitely a good spring and a good start. Obviously, getting sick sucks, but there's nothing you can do about that. It's part of it. It's like getting injured. If you want to get better, you're going to have to push your body. And if you do that, you'll risk getting injured. You'll risk getting, getting sick. And it's dealing with it. And, I mean, if we look at the last... You graduated in December, so you started fully training... Uh, right at the beginning of with December. With me, yeah, yeah, early December. So for the last six months, there weren't many workouts where you were like, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Or we obviously did some hard ones where we hit the wall. Yeah. It was part of it. But yes, the thresholds were super smooth. Mm -hmm. Anytime we had reps, you were able to do at least the minimum that I was giving you. Like yeah, if yeah. I'm like seven to 10, you were always hitting the minimum, which that's, that's the whole goal. Some mm -hmm. days you feel better and, and you do all of them. Sometimes you make it to the bare minimum and that's part of it. But... I think that may be the first time that you're training so consistently. And you were consistent mileage-wise. Yeah. You had previous years where you were like hitting 60, 65 or 70 on average. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the last six months, I mean, the average for, for all of those put together is probably higher than you ever ran before. Without a doubt. I mean, so, I, I was over a thousand miles in like three months yeah. and I was like, holy crap. Like we were putting in a lot of work, which is obviously great to see. I mean... It's not an easy thing to do. Obviously, the high mileage is really probably the biggest thing about like running with what we're doing. Like, if you can handle that, obviously the yeah. thresholds come with it. Like realistically, so that was I was really happy to see that. Obviously, and it's definitely a training style that I think I thrive the most in. Like even when we were doing like Lindenwood's coach, what we were doing over there was just absurd. Like let's yeah. be honest, twenty times one hundred. Twenty times one hundred gets you ready for for oh, the eight hundred, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> first workout back, and I was just like twenty by one hundred. Yeah, that was insane. So yeah, I definitely like this a lot more. No, I doubt. But if you put it into perspective, like your PR on the five K wasn't like huge, wasn't yeah. like a whole minute, which it, it never goes like that. You gotta yeah. go step by step. But if you look at uh, the two people that were around you in that race, Nate and Ken, Ken ended up running fourteen fifty four fifty two this season. Obviously, Nate finished like super strong on the steeple, running yeah, Nate's insane. Nine oh eight. A fastest freshman in D2. So. Fast freshman in D2. Shout out Nate Shout Olson. out to him, yeah. Yeah, no, they're insane. So you were being competitive within races where people ended up running pretty fast. And if you were focused on running track, you would have been right there. Like, yeah. 
I mean, obviously with the situation I'm in, road races are a little bit easier and winning 300 bucks for a road race is obviously going to be better than, you know, a yeah. breaking, breaking 15 would have been great, but I'll still take $300 over breaking 15. I mean, absolutely. And any day of the that. week, but and breaking 15 is going to come sooner or later because yeah. it's just going to be part of the process. They're going to be running so much faster than that, but it's just, you, we cannot focus the whole season for track. It's, not every meet has a 5K, it's like the yeah. 10K on the track. Not every meet has a 5K. It has to be competitive. Um, probably um, Wash U Distance Carnival was yeah, the yeah. place to do it. Uh, we ended up doing a road race for, for other reasons. Yeah, because I had screwed yeah. that. <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> but, but it's just part of it. I mean, we cannot get obsessed with times when yeah, yeah. literally your fitness is just growing exponentially month by month. And it's I, only been six months. Yeah, exactly. And I've never felt more fit in my life. Like those workouts, I couldn't dream of doing like my first year of, I mean, to put it into perspective, my first year of junior college, I was running like 28.12 as my PR for the AK. I'm running that on the treadmill in the middle of my threshold. Yeah. Every single f threshold I've been done, it's like 28.12 is the threshold pace. So like just to put that into perspective, like obviously five years ago was five years, but like I wouldn't have dreamed of it. And even when I got to Lindenwood, like especially after the new coach took over. I didn't think I was ever going to do anything very good. I ran 26, 12 or 13 at the best. And that was juggling obviously two different workout programs and uh, finally being able to be on just this, the first, obviously five mile we did, I destroyed that AKPR yeah. and it was in the middle of the winter. It was like 20, 30 degrees out. Yeah. So I was like, obviously it's a huge jump and I've been feeling great ever since, but looking forward to the summer. I know last summer I was pretty much just doing progression and threshold, just getting ready for cross country. What are you thinking for this summer? What do you think is going to be the thing to focus on? Definitely the main goal is going to be getting your mileage, your weekly mileage through the next two, three months higher. So if last summer we were at building up to 80, 85, 90, maybe we want to hit the average for the summer at 90, you know, okay. building up slowly, yeah. you are already pretty close. So there is not much build up that we need to do but taking a couple of weeks to recover, making sure that physically you're a hundred percent. And then we'll start building probably like to 90, a hundred. We cannot get, we cannot get obsessed with one number. There is not a magic number that yeah. is going to make you run that is going to turn you into a pro, mm -hmm. but it's like the consistency over the whole summer leading up to the next season. So we're going to use as many weeks of easy runs and maybe a couple of progression runs to build that up, find some consistency, like, making sure that you are not hurting, yeah, yeah. running the miles, making sure that you're recovering. You work too, yeah. obviously doing all the editing for the channel. Uh, that's, that's still work and we need to be able to balance that. If yeah. the magic number for you is 90 miles a week or staying at 80, we're still going to see uh, improvement over the next couple of years, staying consistent. For sure. Because there is still a, a lot of adaptation that we need to go through. And I mean, you can see with your thresholds, they, they keep getting better and better by just by doing the same distance, same pace, and same weekly mileage mm. it keeps getting better. So your reps, like the 5K that you ran was faster than the reps that we were doing up to that point. Yep. So sometimes it's just building that aerobic part and not have to worry too much about suffering on max VO2 reps. Yeah, <sighs> yeah for sure. Oh yeah, I definitely think that's going to be very helpful because obviously last year we was doing thresholds in a six minute pace and like that was not easy to get used to, but finally, obviously a year later, I'm down to 540, like 20 seconds is a pretty good jump to say yeah. the least. And I mean, you know, obviously going into it now, like six minute pace doesn't seem like anything. Like we, I did that, uh, like the first day of the year, I want to say it was the 10 mile threshold I did out in middle of nowhere, Illinois on the road. And yeah. we averaged like 556 for 10 miles and yeah. it felt great. Like I was very, felt very good with that, which. And it'll be nice too, because now with the weather being nicer, I can start doing stuff outside. I'll have my dad biking next to me, which is huge. Like even today when we were doing that workout on the track, like it felt so much easier with you in front of me pacing. Like, it's harder. I feel it on my own training. If I have to run on my own, I don't really know if it's just all mental. It might feel I, 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 It may be all mental. I don't know. It just feels, it's just so much harder. The it same is. work with a group or by yourself is harder. So we need to be careful with that because if I keep sending you workouts that you will only do the days that you feel good, you're going to have to stop like half of the time because yeah. if, if we're doing all the high mileage, we are not going to feel good almost any day. Mm -hmm. 
and so it, I don't know, especially for me with my training too, and I see it and I try to replicate that on you. Over the last two years, I've been trying to, obviously there are those sessions where you have to hammer it, yeah. but we are, I'm not doing anything special. I've been getting better over the last two years um, just by being consistent mm. and making sure that I leave every session knowing that I could have done a couple more reps, a couple more miles. And I think that's huge. I think that's that's all you need. Just that consistency. Yeah. Building up that building up that aerobic base. And so far for me it's been enough. And I think for you as well. Like we didn't really touch any speed going into yeah. that five K. You run a PR. Obviously the conditions were really good uh, mm. at our home meet. But even like I cannot like for that five K where you made some cash. You were not fresh because you were sick that week. Yeah. But even being sick, you were able to perform. All yeah, the races yeah. that you had, there wasn't a single one that you were like, oh, I don't know what happened today. I just felt terrible. Yeah. And I think that's important. As an athlete, you need to be able to perform on the day of the race. You don't get to pick. Yeah, yeah. So and getting... that's probably a big mental thing too, like just getting through a race. Like mm -hmm. even if you feel like crap, like being able to push yourself through a race, like it's not easy. Like this sport sucks. Yeah. Like let's not like <laughs> Doing a 5K sucks. Like, it's not easy when you're going that hard. You know, 800 meters to go, you want to die. Yeah. So, no, it doesn't matter how fast, how slow you start. <laughs> yeah, you want to die. It's at the always end. tough. But I mean, I feel like finishing those races, like, it all, like, it pays off when you actually are able to do that. Cause, like, yeah. the, the harder you train, the easier those races are going to be. I mean, it's always going to be hard, but, like, a little bit easier is, it goes a long way. And yeah, it's just being able to finish all the workouts, just mentally, it gets you ready for. If you show up to a race where the last three weeks you drop out of a workout every week, even if they were crazy workouts, you know, even if, yeah. even if you're running so close to your 800 PR on, on 800 reps, you're still kind of like, yeah, I was supposed to do a couple more reps. But if you, every week, you just keep building that confidence. Yeah. And uh, during the cross country season, I didn't race uh, against like anybody that was really, really good. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't losing any races pretty much. And I was also not being like tested out against like really, really top guys. But just by like, the workouts and going to some of those races, I was just building that confidence. I felt that I was untouchable. I yeah. felt like oh, I can beat anybody right now. When yeah, in yeah. reality, there are lots of people that yeah, can yeah, beat yeah. me. You go jump in that Bowerman line. Yeah, I mean, they, they let me in. I can pace, I can pace two laps. I, I can, can pace two laps. laps. I can pace 200. Yeah. Be out. But yeah, I, I do think obviously confidence is a huge thing. Uh, mentality for this sport is it goes a long way. But uh, any thoughts on what I'm going to open up with in the fall? We kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but yeah, no, we we have to look at the at the calendar. What's being offered? Uh, we don't want to wait until it's too late after the summer because the winter here in the Midwest is not ideal. <sighs> Brutal. But that, I think if we can look for, it doesn't have to be like a half marathon. It can be like a 10k, a 10 miler. Uh, a half marathon, um, whatever it is around that distance, I think that a marathon would be too aggressive just for yeah. for opening up, Agreed. especially with the training that we are doing right now. There is no need to jump up that high uh, race-wise. Mm -hmm. um, but probably like looking for a half marathon uh, is going to align perfectly with the training that we are going to be doing because we are not going to touch anything quick. We are just going to build that mileage. The threshold pace is going to feel... It may not feel easier because we already, I think we already got to that point that we understand what that feel has to be like, mm -hmm. but it's going to get faster for sure. And sooner or later, you're going to be running 520, 530 for sure. Yeah. And, and that'll give us a pretty good idea, just kind of like a bit of a test to know where yeah. your fitness is at. But we'll have to look at the calendar. For sure. And that's the good thing. We, we have so many options and we can be so flexible with that because you are not Thai. To, to a cross-country season, to an yeah. NCAA season, that if the summer goes really, really good, maybe we open up late summer. If we feel like we are not there yet to race because you got sick, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully not, but if you got hurt through the summer, we need to recover. We can wait for late September, early October. Yeah. So, I think uh, very fortunate for the area I live, like being able to go to Chicago or Naperville, they have so many races. Like we have a pretty good variety of options. And then even once school starts in, uh, down in St. Louis, like I can go down there and live with uh, Tay or Justin for a day or two and be able yeah. to crash there, which is 
really convenient. So for where we are, I mean, I got very lucky for the racing scene of it, but yeah, I mean, I think that's uh, obviously a great plan. Obviously I'd do whatever you tell me to, so it's not that hard. How do you feel, how does it feel coaching me? Is it easy to coach me as an athlete? It's easy, you do exactly what I'm asking to. You are committed, it's like, I don't have to worry about you getting up in the morning and running or yeah, yeah. like you keep yourself motivated. I can just try to adapt what I'm doing. Like I'm being coached by somebody else too and he's been great for the last two years. You know, I've gotten so much better mm -hmm. and I'm just trying to adapt that to you that you're training on your own and training with a group. Yeah. And that, well, that's the, the biggest thing that you don't have a group to train with. So yeah. we try to adjust the paces that are perfect for you. And when your dad is helping with the pacing, that usually goes very well. So yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It's a lot easier. No, I mean, you've been doing a killer job. I can't complain. I mean, I think I got very, very lucky that we met at the time we did because a uh, semester later, we wouldn't even have ran into each other. Yeah, no. It's insane to think. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. I might not even be running. Or You'd probably be, be doing just marathons. doing your easy runs, you know, preparing the marathon. You'd probably be training for a marathon. I'd probably be like doing Like any marathons. other runner. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's probably where, right. where to go. But yeah, if you guys are interested in getting trained by Coach Arrow, obviously we got Edge Athletics. Uh, I'll drop a link. You guys can fill out a form and get in contact with Arrow. I know you're taking on another runner from North Carolina. Yeah, we, we recent, recently started coaching a couple more guys. So we are going to try to maybe build a team, people yeah. that after college or during college, I still want to try to race, not just run. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how that goes. That's awesome. So yeah, if you guys are, are interested, I'll drop a link in the bio below. Uh, check that out. And I do appreciate, obviously, jumping on and talking to the yeah. folks on the channel. It's not often we get to get you on, but... Yeah, I think it's the first time I'm talking in the channel, besides a couple <laughs> yeah, of, like, yeah, yeah. words on the, the video. Yeah, yeah. The voice. yeah, that was a funny. Um, I mean, yeah, it's funny that I've actually probably seen you more than I've seen everybody at college just because I saw you, what, three times this year? Because you came down in December. December, and March. I came and visited, yeah. and then now again. Yeah. That's insane. No, but. we'll get you back there after the summer for sure. Yeah, I need to come. I, I got to get out there at some point again. I need to win some money from a yeah. race, and I'll get a plane ticket back out, and we'll come train and whatnot and Absolutely. live a good life. But, uh, yeah, thank you again. Appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoy the video. We'll see you guys uh, at some point again in the near future. Best of luck racing tomorrow, obviously. Shout out to everybody racing in NCAA Nats. And, uh, yeah, it's all from us. Take care of all the things, and peace out. And subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs>